Hello everybody, Frankie Day here for Frankie Day Models. Okay guys, Merry Christmas everybody. Uh, this is a post Christmas, uh, after Christmas video here that I'm doing today. Also, this is going to be an inbox review and another build I'll be doing. I'll probably be starting on it this evening. This is my Christmas present. I received this from my beautiful daughters. And uh, believe you me, it's uh, put tears in my eyes when I got it. And I'm still kind of emotional over it. Uh, before we get started, guys, uh, like uh, I was hoping everybody out there, you know, had a very nice, joyous, and jolly Christmas this year. And uh, guys got plenty of styrene, plenty of paper, and plenty of wood, and plenty of good stuff. And I hope none of you guys didn't uh, get too too tight and get pulled over with the Christmas lights behind you. And uh, you want to go there. And we had talks before about that. I mean, and and uh, you guys are pretty smart and wise enough not to do that. And uh, most model makers are intelligent not to do stuff like that because we like our styrene. Okay, this is going to be a long ass video. And uh, I mean that uh, literally. Uh, for my Christmas present yesterday, I received under the tree. I received a bunch of card models too, I got. And uh, this was the Keller Deller. This is the one that put the tear in, the, in Frankie Day's eyes, and and uh, not too many things upset me, and not upset me, I mean, uh, make me emotionally is is, is uh, things that really means a lot, you know. I mean, uh, when, you're, when your daughters, your wives, and sons, you know, they, they buy you something nice for Christmas, you always you always wanted to get or something, you know, and it comes to view, and it's very emotional. You know how it is when you're a family man and everything. Okay. <coughs> Enough talking. I'm going to swing this video around the camera over here. I'm going to show you what Frankie Day got for Christmas from uh, Santa. There it is, boys. That's the new 132nd scale B24J Liberator. And I'll tell you guys, I was expecting to see this one day on the new year that's coming up. But they're in the States now. And a lot of you great fellows out there have probably bought one of these. And uh, so I've got these from my daughters for Christmas and everything. And uh, this thing is big. I mean, this cloth is huge. I mean, it's really huge, guys. I mean, the fuselage is longer than my, than my arm. I mean, it's big. And... Uh, Kit retails. I don't think I don't know where they got it. I don't know where they they bought this at though. They had to buy it at a hobby shop somewhere. We got about two, about two or three of them here out here in Ohio. I know of. And I know this one didn't come from Smitty's. And uh, I didn't question. Well, I seen a 132nd scale B24 Liberator on the old Christmas tree. I wasn't in question. Would you buy that? I was very grateful. And. Uh, it retails for two hundred and fifty dollars and ninety-nine cents. They paid for it. A lot of plastic, big, huge, huge, colossal, enormous airplane. Man, I tell you, these one thirty-second bombers are getting big. Next, I'll come out with a B twenty-nine. You look at a fifty-five inch wingspan, one thirty-second scale. Of one of those jobs. I don't know how big this thing is. Probably got a 40 inch wingspan, 45, I don't know. But uh, anyway, this is the Hobby Boss 132nd scale B24J Liberator. Now, I know you probably can get these cheaper as time goes by. As the new year gets underway and started, and I imagine by February and April. You'll be seeing a lot of these on eBay or uh, Worth Point or some place, you discount uh, places. Uh, you'll get them pretty cheap. It's probably on eBay. You probably get them a lot more cheaper there. I imagine you can probably pick one up for about $200, cat, $200, and probably another four months from now. But anyway, they're in the States now, they retail at $250.99. And uh, again, like I said, you probably get them cheaper. But I really don't know. I mean, they're, uh, this thing is, 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 it's a big airplane, guys. I mean, a kid just big. You better have a place to house this thing. 
It's, it's huge. I got plenty of room. But uh, like I say, you gotta consider, excuse me guys, I just had supper a while ago. I'm getting a little, a little running up the gunnels. Okay, uh, like I was saying, you gotta have a find a room to uh, store these bad boys. You know, first of all, before you um, buy the kit, you better find a place to put it. <laughs> if you don't, you're gonna be like building a, a rowboat inside your living room, getting nowhere to get it out of the house. But okay, this is the inbox review right here. First of all, we're gonna take the box out of the way. This thing's big, guys. I'm standing this box. This box is longer than my arms. My long, even my fingers, as you can see. Big, big. This thing's a big, big, big box. Okay, we're gonna move the kit box out of here. We're gonna start out with a fuselage. Let's check this, guys. This thing is colossal. Look at that bad boy. My God. My arm. That's my arm. Fingers extended. Still got another four inches. Fuselage comes with two halves. As you turn around, look at a full interior. Look at all that scribe. Look at all that, guys. Man. You better load up with some paint with this bad boy. I'm telling you guys, Humber Old Tens ain't gonna do it with this. It's gonna take a lot of paint. And uh, this thing is very strong. It worked, it, Hobby Boss was not skimpy on the plastic with this thing. Very strong plastic. It puts you in mind of the, uh, the Monogram B24 Liberator and the B17G Flying Fortress that they've done. And, uh, it's, it's very thick plastic. Like I say, they want to you on the plastic for 250 clams. They make sure you got your money's worth. Uh, the surface detail of this thing is, uh, wait, excuse me, guys. I'm trying to get this camera focus here. Very well, not overdone. Excellent for washes. Excellent for washes. Man, this thing looks beautiful. Huge. This thing is huge. Very big. And next, we'll pop out the wings. Wings consist of two sprues. Here's the wings. About as long as my arm, almost as long as about four inches shy of my, of my arm. From wing tip to wing root. The detail of this thing is it's superb. It's really nice, guys. This thing even has full flaps, ailerons, rudder, stabilizer, has Fowler flaps. And it looks like to me they're operable. Look like to me they're very operable. Same thing with the ailerons. This thing's a beautiful airplane, guys. There's detail inside the, uh, there's an impetus right here. I don't know where this goes at. This may be part of the, uh, part of the inside of the interior. I don't know what this part is, fellas, but evidently I'll get to it. And when I get to it, I'll find out what it is. It looks like some kind of interior part. Don't have a clue what it is, but the instructions will reveal it. When we get the instructions out, it'll identify that part. This is the first time I've opened up the kit, guys. So we're all doing this together as a learning experience. 
Okay, he's on the screw. Number two. Number three, I mean. Those are the bottom wings. And here's the top ones. Man, the detail of this thing is superb. Huge. It puts me in mind of a GoMix flight model, the 133 second liberator I got down below in the basement. It's just a tad bigger than that because 132nd scale is a little bigger than 133. Not much, but a little bigger. Man, those ninja nest cells are massive. Man. This whole airplane's massive. But I'll tell you one thing, this thing's worth every penny. All these sprues are in these little baggies right here, fellas. You got interiors. This looks like this fits on the uh, on the side where the waist guns are at. All interior parts. They're very strong. Very strong. Huh. They got these little pins right here with ejector marks on the bottom right here. They can be seen anyway, so as long as they're not seen externally where you're going to see them in view. They paid special attention to make quite certain that the ejector marks are not on the detailed parts that are going to be shown and, uh, and painted. They're pretty much on the ball in this kit, guys. So you got three sprues so far we went through. This is sprue number four. Put it at the side. This bag contains a few more sprues, so there'll be six sprues there in total. You got two identical sprues right here. You got your engines. I noticed the engines right here just not come to mind. In view of the engines, or the Pratt Whitney engines they used, these are treated exactly like how exactly how Monogram done their Liberator. All right here. We'll zoom in a little bit, guys. See what I mean, fellas? Same treatment that's done on the Monogram Liberator. On all most of them, anyway. It's good, though, because it'll be hidden beside these cowls right here, as long as the detail out. I imagine they got aftermarket parts for this thing right now as, as, I'm, as I speak. I know they got the decals out, because I saw them last night. And uh, so I imagine they're making uh, aftermarket parts like resin engines separately and uh, a few other things. But these engines are very detailed. With the wash on there and everything like that, it'll bring out the cylinder rings. Even the superchargers are detailed. Cow flaps are all detailed. So two sprues, you got your props and everything on here. Now, this is like Bombay. Here's the Bombay door. I notice there's a flaw right here. Because I know this, I know the Liberators. Strawberry Bitch down there at Air Force Space Museum. The Bombay doors are not corrugated. We'll zoom in a little more. They're smooth and riveted because the liberators on the bo on the Bombay. Excuse me, guys. They're corrugated. Got it across here, there, and there. That way. That way, when they uh, they 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 roll, send the whole unit come up like this. They roll as they close the as the Bombay doors close. That's one flaw right there they made. I bet you there'll be an aftermarket set on these. What you can do is this. If you want to go another step for a challenge, get yourself a steel engineer rule with a scribing tool and lightly score. The corrugated lines go down to the next one, and so on, like this. 
Because I know that, they, that the Bombay doors on these things are corrugated. They're corrugated lines with rivets on there. Oh, I see what they did. These Bombay's are optional. Either they're closed or they're open. So there's an option with the Bombay doors, guys. So if, we, if you want to see the Bombay, these Bombay doors will go up on the sides. But still, even then, they still ain't got the corrugated lines on. Yes, they do. I don't think so. Just, just rivets, rivet lines. They're not recessed. I still think it's a flaw on their part. I can't be stand corrected. Okay, our next boo here is more stuff here. It's like this nose wheel door right here. You got your waist gunner tops, football antenna, your bomb racks. These look like uh, interior parts go to your nose wheel assembly. Your, pi your, pi your pilot tube here, P top tube. Internal structures, too. Man, this thing goes on and on. This brew is the bulkhead. That fits in the fuselage. This is where your Bendix ball turret's at. And uh, you, there's your control panel. And you got your structural parts. I don't know where these go. I imagine they probably fit somewhere in the, in the noseable area. Next brew is a stabilizer. It's big. That stabilizer from tip to tip is about 10 inches. Yeah, 10 inches on the money. 10 inches of the cord. It's three inches. These are vertical stabilizers, your rudder and fins. They're big. Huge. That's my hand. Look how big that bad boy is. Gotta excuse the distance of this camera, guys. There's no way I can be able to make a video of this thing because this thing is so big. You gotta raise the tripod up and everything. To get a good view of this thing. And these rudders look like they could be movable too, I think. Don't know. Won't know until you get to the construction part. Here's some more internal structures. You got your Fowler flaps right here. Here's your Fowler flaps. This is where your ball turret goes in the interior. Where's grading at? Ball turret fits right here in the middle. In the bulkhead here, it either goes to the plastic compartment or, to, or via to the bomb bay. Here's your pilot's compartment. Here's your Fowler flaps. Looks like ammunition belts or ladders or structure mechanics or something. I don't know what it is. That's the part of your cockpit floor. That's probably where your nose belt goes at. Okay, guys, this is the last screw right here. All right, no, it ain't. Man, I just haven't even begun yet. Okay, guys. This right here is the wing spar. It's strong. It's courtly. See all that, see all those uh, stiffers they have in there? This thing is really strong. It has to support that the massive wing this thing's got. Man, this thing is big. Jeez. The cost of paint's gonna cost some money. Well, yeah, here's the far on top right here. As I turn it over. Back the same way. This thing is strong. It tells me that wing ain't going nowhere. Okay, guys. We got a box here. 
a box of sprues that's 